All right, hey guys, welcome back to another week of interactive level design. Um, my name is Richard Atlas, and I'm a founder and one of the team members of Clever Endeavor Games. We're making a game called Ultimate Chicken Horse, which you should be able to see on your screen. Um, and I'm the one responsible for, well, a bunch of things, but one of the things I'm responsible for is level design. And the point of this stream is to do some interactive level design and show you our level design ideas or my level design choices um, and get your feedback on those choices and explain my decisions and um, and you'll tell me if you think it's a great idea, you think it's a terrible idea, uh, and then we can discuss. <clears throat> so um, what I'm going to do today is introduce another mechanic of in in the level design. I guess I should actually take a step back. Um, so the game is a 2D platformer where you build the level as you play, which means uh, in the puzzle version, which is in the, the one-player puzzle mode, which is the thing that we're doing today, um, <clears throat> Sorry, what we're going to do is um, you get a certain block or you get a group of certain blocks or platforms and you have to place them in the level in a certain way in order to uh, make it to the end. So just give you a quick example of that. Um, and show you <clears throat> one level. So let's say this would be the uh, first level. Just check and make sure you can see that. Yes. Um, all right, so this would be the first level. So you see the beginning is at this green flag, the end is at this red flag. You open your inventory. In this case, you're only given one block. So you have this one platform, and then you choose where to place it, and then you can run through the level. So, fairly simple. That's the first level. Uh, obviously, it's going to be fairly easy. And then you get to the end. So, um, that's the goal of the game. And the cool thing with this is that you get to you have to choose carefully where and how you're placing your platforms. Obviously, later on it gets more difficult. Um, where and how to place your platforms in order to reach the end of the level, and um, and do so using you know in the safest way possible. Because eventually there'll be things that shoot projectiles, there'll be things that swing and move and roll and all sorts of things, and you'll have to figure out how to get around it. Um, so, the interesting thing, or one of the interesting things in platformers um, <coughs> is, it's always interesting to see when I play new platformer games how they introduce the different mechanics. So, you have things like basic jumping. Fine, so they put a gap, you have to jump over it. Then you have avoiding obstacles. Then maybe you have, if there's a um, double jump, or if there's a wall jump, the, the, the game developer has to figure out how to teach the player how to do that without it seeming like necessarily being a tutorial of like, now you can press this, now you can press this. So um, that's something that we want to try to make sure that we're doing, um, is introducing those things in a fun and interesting way. Um, but the big challenge in this game, seeing as you're given the blocks that you have to place, um, is that it's very easy for a player to, you know, as a designer, maybe I'll design some level and I'll have all these cool things in mind. And then the player goes through it and they're like, oh, well, maybe I'll just put this block here and skip the entire thing that you were trying to get me to do and get to the end of the level. So it's kind of like a double challenge because here we have to introduce the mechanics of jumping, um, wall jumping, you know, um, running and jumping at the same time, different things like that. But also, we have to introduce the new blocks. So we have to introduce blocks that are saying, um, we have to introduce blocks that are, let's say, collapsing blocks or a rope swing or um, all sorts of different things. So that's where we have this challenge. Um, but what we've been able to do, or what, what my plan is at least, is to introduce the blocks in a way that the first time you see the block, you don't get to interact with it, or sorry, you, you get to interact with it, but you don't get to place it. So let's say, let's say a collapsing block. Um, you'll get, you'll see a collapsing block in the level, but you won't. Um, you'll see a collapsing block in the level, but you won't actually um, get to place the collapsing block. So then you see it, you run through it, and then the next time you might receive that block and you might be able to place that. Sorry, one second. Sorry, someone is being annoying on Twitch. Um, anyway, 
So, um, so that's what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a specific mechanic, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, I'm going to just draw it out. I'm going to draw out the plan of um, uh, how, how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to draw that out basically on paper or on Photoshop. Um, and then we're going to try and look at putting it in Unity. So this, this stream is kind of a half, um, it's kind of like half Unity tutorial, half level design tutorial, half just kind of interactive seeing what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, that's that. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go through this. Um, give me just one second. All right. Um, I had to ban somebody who was trying to go onto the stream and say, "Hey, you should follow this stream instead." Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, let's go into that. So what I'm going to try and discuss today, or what the mechanic that I'm going to try to discuss, uh, is called pressure. So pressure obviously means a bunch of different things. Um, in platformer games, pressure basically means uh, that the player feels they need to do something or else something else will happen. Very, very vague, um, but let me give you just a quick example. So, um, let's say, make sure this works, it does, okay. So, a good example of pressure is you have your platforming level, sure, um, and you have your guy And um, he has arms, sure, why not? Um, so a good example of pressure is you have maybe like a wall of fire or something behind that starts to move across the screen this way. So the player feels that they have to move and they have to move quickly. And all the things that they have to do, they have to do them carefully and properly. Um, so that's one way of adding pressure is that the player feels like they need to um, they need to run through the level and they need to not die. Obviously that's the point of platformers, is generally to not die. Um, so, uh, that's a good example of pressure. Another example of pressure would be um, if there's a, a, a big bad guy or something coming from behind you um, and you have to run away and chase it. Um, what wouldn't be an example of pressure is if you had something like um, Actually, don't even have to say that. Um, if you just had some part of your level and you had something that was shooting projectiles here and you were over here, um, this is not an example of pressure because this there's no actual need for you to move quickly through the level. So there's no, there's no thought of, uh oh, something's going to get me, I have to go through. Um, the thought is more, okay, I have to time myself carefully to make sure that I can... Um, make sure that I can get through without dying. So, um, we're going to talk about pressure, um, and I think next week we will talk about, what did I say? Yeah, I think next week we'll talk about timing and how we can use timing in different new and sort of interesting ways. Um, so, for now, I'll just, um, yeah, so for now I'm just going to make a basic example of how to use pressure and what we're going to try and do is introduce blocks new blocks and introduce the mechanic of pressure at the same time so what I want to introduce is collapsing blocks collapsing blocks meaning blocks that when you jump on them after a couple of seconds they disappear um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start out over here um, and then we're going to actually there's a there's a sort of added bonus that I'll show you later. Um, so we're going to start right here, actually. Um, I'm just going to make this a little longer. So so we're going to start out here. The reason for this you'll see in a second. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have to jump to a collapsing block. So let's call it a one by three. I'm just going to put these here, and then we can put this. So you can tell it's going to collapse. Um, so this is going to be the first collapsing block. 
And then I'm just going to copy paste this. Get a second collapsing block. And then get to the end. So we'll call this the end. Now, uh, you might ask how this adds pressure to the situation. Um, and the answer is that, well here, once you jump on this collapsing block, you know you have to start moving forward quickly because you know it's about to collapse. So the pressure that you're getting is pressure to move forward, which is okay, you have to go from, once you land here, you know you have two seconds, you have to go here, there you know you have two seconds, you have to go here. Now, the problem with this level design is that you go here, it doesn't very clearly tell you that you shouldn't go backwards. Now, obviously, you're trying to get to the end, so you know you shouldn't go back. But from here, if you panic, you can always jump back to here. Now, the block will be collapsed, so maybe that's not the best idea, but it doesn't quite give you the feeling of pressure that I really want to portray. So, what I suggest is that we put something here, let's say a ball of spikes, that actually moves back and forth. So this thing is going to move back and forth, and you're going to start out over here where the flag is, um, over here, and you're going to see this thing coming towards you. So yes, you could jump over it and like jump over it over here and try and time yourself, but realistically what you're going to end up doing is saying, oh, like I need to move. So you move to here. And once you're here, you don't have the feeling of, oh, I can just hop back because you know there's going to be this spike that's moving back and forth. So the next thing you're going to do is jump over here. Same thing, because you can't really go backwards anymore because that block is going to be collapsed. Then you're going to move to the end. So that's just a very basic sort of example of showing how, um, how, we, can get, uh, how we can get a feeling of pressure and get the player to move forward. Now, what I want to do also is add a little bit of a sort of bonus to this, um, which is this level is going to be uh, relatively early in the game, but there is already the um, this big spiky block, or this spiky ball that's going to be moving back and forth. So that's already a little bit difficult, and there's also collapsing blocks, which are also, I wouldn't say they're difficult, but they're certainly not the first five levels, let's say. So this is probably going to be around level of the approximately 200 that we're planning. There's probably going to be, this is probably going to be somewhere in the 10 to 20 range. Um, maybe, maybe closer to 20. What I'd like to do is introduce one more mechanic in the same level um, with the emphasis being on the pressure that I had discussed. So one of the things that we had done previously, and the, the place that I put this level in sort of the, the order of how the levels should be, um, the place that I put this level is after you learn a wall jump. Um, and if we can, I'd like to practice the wall jump and try and introduce a different mechanic. So let me just show you my idea quickly. So what if we get rid of this and we do this. Now, wall jumping had been introduced previously um, in terms of jumping from, for example, I'll just use a different color. So we had introduced wall jumping as, here's your guy, here's a wall, here's a wall, so wall jump, wall jump, and up. What we didn't introduce yet was, here's your guy, or girl, um, and what we didn't introduce yet was wall jump, wall jump, and up. So what I want to do is try to introduce that wall, the wall jumping up um, at the same time as this pressure mechanic, because pressure is, is a mechanic that's used to, um, to get players to move forward and to get players to enjoy the game, uh, to feel like there's something, like they're getting something from it, but it's not a mechanic that we're teaching the player in the sense of um, in the sense of something that they will learn how to use, like they won't be able to learn how to use this skill to then be better at the game later, right? This is something that's much more internal than that. It's not like, oh, I know how to do this. It's more like, oh, that was really fun. I wonder why. Um, so what I want to do is introduce this 
um, introduce this here as well. So what I'm going to do is get rid of these, and that's the point of this wall that we have over here. So the player is not really going to have any option but to do this wall jump. And they will already know how to wall jump, they just won't necessarily know how to wall jump from one to the same one to the same one. They'll really know how to do it back and forth. So, um, now the question is, we're giving the player blocks as well, right? So, um, if we're giving the player blocks, then obviously they're going to be, be able to maybe get around this. So if we gave them a couple of big, of regular blocks that weren't collapsing, then they could maybe just put them here, put them here, and then they have very little work to do. So what I propose is that the blocks that we actually give them are going to be these ones. Why not? All right. So what I'm going to do now um, is put those into Unity, or put this put this idea into Unity, um, and we're going to see how it works. So I'm um, going to open up my Unity. Now this I had showed you before was the level one. So this is just a simple level where you place a block, jump, jump, and that's it. Uh, obviously the art in this is not final, I just put graph paper behind because I'm working on it as if you would work on graph paper. Um, and alright, so this is a very basic level. So what I'm going to do is go to my folder. So I actually copied it already. You'll see, I'm not sure how good the quality is, but you can see, um, if you can't see, it's I just copy pasted the Unity file, uh, the Unity scene file of the first level, and I'm going to rename it. Um, now I don't want to number it just yet because I'm I'll have to go through the levels and see where where it kind of fits in, but I'm going to call it uh, Twitch Pressure for now, and then I will um, deal with that later, so you guys don't have to worry about me going through all the levels. So. Um, let's just close this. Alright, so now I have Twitch Pressure. Um, this big stop sign you see is the pause menu. So just while I'm working with the scene, I'm going to uncheck the pause menu so it disappears. Um, that'll just make life a little bit easier in terms of seeing things. So the reason I copy-pasted it was because I already have the start, I already have the end, I already have the green, which is the colliders. So those are just regular blocks or anything that you can jump on. Um, the blue, which are boundaries, which mean you can't wall jump off them or anything. Um, and the red, which is hazard, which means death. So um, what I'm going to do uh, is look back at this and try and make this in my Unity scene. So I know I want the left side to be a little wider. Um, I'm going to make the whole scene a little wider, actually, because I want to make sure that um, there's enough room to do these, to do this jump, and to do this jump, and this jump, without being able to, um, without being able to just run and make this jump without placing any blocks, or even make the jump with only placing one block, right? So I figure if the player is running and jumping, then they could have they could make it with one block. So if they were doing a run jump, they would be able to do this and then this. Um, but I don't want them to be able to do a run jump and get through the whole that whole gap. So um, what I'm going to do is make the scene a little bit wider. So I'm going to push my boundaries out to probably a little too far. Let's see. Part of this is going to be playing with it and checking, but um, let's do that. So uh, so I moved that out, and now the way our grid system works, I really don't think you can see this, but there's grid lines, um, there's grid lines in Unity, and the way our thing is set up is such that our blocks always have to be just sort of opposite the grid, so between any two squares. Um, the reason we're al aligning everything to a grid is because when people place the blocks, you don't want to have to place the block and end up with some weird gap between a collider and your block. You don't want to end up with some 
kind of strange things happening. So this way the, the colliders will line up perfectly with the blocks and you can place them really wherever you want within this grid. So I'm going to make this, oops, make this a little longer. Uh, let's call it not 400, let's call it 14. And also with that sort of shell, we can decide how um, we can decide how fast we want that thing to move. So um, that's another thing. We don't have to necessarily have this um, this object it doesn't have to be flying super super fast so that the player has like no time to react. They want to be able to see it, like analyze the situation, realize okay this is going to be an issue, um, jump. Pretty kind of simple as that. Um, so if you guys are just joining, i just do a little quick re recap. So I'm doing um, interactive level design for our 2D platformer game, and uh, I'm doing the one-player version, which is a puzzle mode where you're given certain blocks and you have to figure out where to place them in the level to get to the end. Um, and we're introducing the mechanic which we call pressure today, which is basically the need for a player to move from one place to the next quickly. Uh, and there's many different ways to do it. I'm going to show you two different ways that we're planning on doing it. Um, in this in this game please if you guys have any comments or thoughts or questions put them in the put them in the chat on twitch uh, for the youtubers I'm going to say the questions out loud in case you can't read it because it's probably really really tiny on the screen and um, and the quality is not great because my internet is lacking in skill so um, back to it then I'm going to uh, get the player to start here great. Uh, the next thing is we want to set up this at the end. So we want to set up this block, basically. I'm going to set up this block, and then I'm going to set up this tall one. All right. Um, so I'm going to make it small. Let's call it... I don't know how small we want it, but... Um, so also, um, I should mention this. We're using, in this setup, we're using a camera collider, which means uh, it's this green line that you, again, probably can't see. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, it's this line that tells us where the camera can go. So that's the farthest the farthest out that the camera can go. So what I want to do is I want to change that so it matches the boundary of the level. Um, because if it doesn't, then I'm going to end up getting, well, not seeing past, and then my player will be able to jump outside of where the camera is seen, which is obviously not a good idea. Um, so. Now you can see the green, or maybe you can't see, but the green line, the, the thin green line, which is the camera collider, lines up with the edge of the boundary. So now my player is going to stop moving where that camera stops moving, and that will make us all happy. Uh, let's move this five. Okay. Um, then I'm just going to copy-paste the collider, because you can do that in Unity, because it's awesome. And make this a fair bit taller. Remember we said the goal was for them to wall jump um, to wall jump up here. Uh, right now you could probably do it with two wall jumps given this size. I'm not sure, we'll have to see. Um, but I'm worried that if the players place the, the um, place the blocks, let's say here and here then uh, it'll be too easy and then we'll have to do many wall jumps. So I'm going to make this even taller and try and ensure that uh, the player will absolutely have to do some wall jumps even if they place these the other blocks as you know as high as they can. Um, so I'm actually going to bring this down a little bit to see where the camera collider ends. Okay. So the reason I'm bringing that down is because I want to make this jump a little bit harder. Uh, this the big gap in the middle. I want to make that a little bit more difficult. Um, let's just move this upwards. All right. So that's going to be the end. Um, and now we said what we wanted to do was give the players. So here in our Unity scene, we can actually choose. Uh, there's a script setup that allows us to choose which um, which blocks we're giving to the player. So in this case, we said we're going to give them two blocks, and they're going to be collapsing blocks. Right now, the collapsing block is only set up as a two by one, 
block, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, later on, we're going to set up one by one, two. Well, we have two by one already, so one by one, three by one, and four by one. Um, that way, we'll have a little bit more sort of versatility with what we can do um, in terms of collapsing blocks. So now, if we go in and play the game or play the level, uh, so we can see this is the start. There's a gap. There's a wall, and the camera collider was not made high enough, so you see I'm trying to move up, and it doesn't work, because the camera collider is telling us that we can only go this this high. So we're going to have to change that. You can see that green line um, is not quite tall enough, so let's go with... Right, 28. Hmm. So here's the thing, because it was not necessarily... Well, it's centered, but... Um, hmm, yeah, it was centered, but it was the the pieces were too low. So you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically leave this um, as let's say 22. So again, I'm not sure if you can see it, but actually, you know what? If I get just get rid of this for a second, you can probably see it. Yeah. So this is the green box that I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move everything down a little bit so that it all fits within the green box, but the red flag up here is still going to fit within here. So I'm going to make this maybe 10.5 to make sure that's still in there. Um, 10.5 um, So let's see if this still works. Uh, almost. Bring it down another one, so I'm just moving it in the y direction and moving everything by one, and that's going to give me um, a little bit extra room to play with. As long as the camera collider, you can, so you can see this green box is still, uh, this green box is still within the camera collider. That's good news. Um, the hazard, obviously, I want to move out of the camera collider because, um, well, I'll show you what happens if you don't. So let's put that back. Now. Uh, if we just place these if we just place these wherever then and if the hazard we're saying is like you can't see it right now but um, you see you'll see the player die and then it's just kind of really awkward looking so the hazard I'm gonna move below where the camera cuts off this way when you place your things when he falls, you don't see him actually die. So, um, all right. So now that the level is nicely set up, everything's fitting between where it has to fit. So now you can see. If I move around, actually, I'm just going to bring the puzzle cursor down. The puzzle cursor for us is an item that places the that places the block. You can see uh, I'm putting it near the start so when it starts out you actually see where the uh, you see where the starting flag is um, and now you'll see we can see the ending everything's clear and good so let's try and place these blocks now um, let's test it actually can the player jump over this big gap just by running and jumping no that's good um, so, can they, if they're running and jumping, can they make just one block? You know, can they land on just one? Yes. Good. Then they can wall jump, wall jump, wall jump, and go up. Um, the last question is, can the player, without running and jumping, in case they haven't quite mastered that yet, can they, can they still make it to the end on both blocks? And the answer is, quite sure, yes. Perfect. So this is exactly the kind of sizing or scale that we want. Um, and the last thing that we want to add is, as I discussed, that spiky ball that's going to move um, here. And that's going to tell the player, like, you got to move. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do, we have an, a block called the fan platform. And the fan platform, as I'll show you in one second, 
moves up and down. So let's see we place our things. Fan platform moves up and down. So what I'm actually going to use to build this level is I'm going to use this, plan, uh, this fan platform and I'm going to turn it sideways because you can always do that. So now you can see <clears throat> that would move sideways, which you can wall jump off. But anyway, um, <clears throat> you'll see where I'm going with this in a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put um, the spiky ball that I want into the fan platform um, as, a, as a child object of the fan platform, which means that all of the behaviors that the fan is doing, the spiky ball is going to do as well. So, um, fan platform, I'm going to put it at position 0, 0, 0, just to make sure that everything's going to line up nicely. And then I'm going to put this spike ball into that child, into, into that object as a child. So you can see here there's the little drop down. It means that underneath the spike block is a child of it. And I'm going to put that at 0, 0, 0. So now you can see they're in the same place. And now what you'll see is if I move this around, um, I get something that looks really weird, but you'll see the spike ball is moving. Um, so that's good. That's what I want. It's still going to kill us. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the sprite renderer. I'm going to take off the box collider from the fan, uh, the fan platform, and from the fan, which is the, the bottom object, um, the thing that the, basically like the propellers there. So I'm going to take off the sprite renderer, take off the box collider. So now all we have is the spike, and what we can see is that we just have the spike that's going to move. Now it should move until it hits something which I believe is the boundary. And then it's going to move a maximum of however many spaces we decide. So um, in this case, it's five, I believe. We can see that here in the script, we've attached um, move distance, or sorry, max distance of five. Okay, um, that's no problem. So, so we're going to um, change this to something higher than five. So maybe we'll put it, actually, you know, maybe we'll reverse the direction, which obviously doesn't change anything appearance wise, but the difference is now that it's going to move towards the player instead of, oh, no, it's not, never mind. Um, hmm. Strange. Okay. Um, well, let's try that again. Okay. Yeah, it was because it was colliding with the ground and decided for some reason to turn around. Um, but what I'm going to do is scale the collider. So you can see here I'm scaling the collider down, so it's really, really small. And then I'm going to scale up the sprite so it's back to its normal size. Um, this way I don't have to worry about the fan platform colliding with anything, I just have to worry about the spike colliding with something. Now this should work, yes, perfect. And now it's moving probably five places and then it's going to stop and turn back around. So what we want it to do is we're going to want to start a little further back here we're going to give it a little bit more speed and we're going to make it move a little further. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, that's a little better. Yes, exactly. Um, so now, when you're playing this, you're going to say, okay, well, I'll put my block here, I'll put my block here. Great. And then um, you're going to see this thing coming for you. So you could, hmm, it's strange, it keeps, it's not reaching as far as it should have. Anyway, um, so you're going to see this thing coming for you. I'm going to make sure it goes all the way. And then you're going to, you could try and time it and jump over it. 
So let's see if this works again. So you could try and time it, I guess. That's possible. Um, but this isn't really going to get you anywhere. So chances are you're going to see the thing coming and you're going to say, oh crap, I need to move, I need to move. And then you're going to hop, hop, and hop. So that's going from a sort of pressure situation to right now you're in zero pressure situation. Um, and here you might say, okay, what, like, what the heck am I supposed to do? Um, but you've already learned the wall jump. As we discussed before, we're trying to introduce the wall jumping, right? Or the wall jumping on the same wall. So now you're going to do this and going to say, okay, I can't figure it out. Eventually you'll realize, oh, I have to jump on the same wall to go up. So this is a good example of how we're going to set up, a, how we set up a level to put some sort of pressure um, on the player. I'll just run through it one more time and show you how that works. So you see a big gap, you figure you have to fill it. We'll take the blocks that we that were given, we'll fill the gap. And then here you see this thing coming for you, it's an action to move. Here you see this is going to disappear, action to move, this is going to disappear, action to move. You're always forced to move forward and that's without having some sort of giant flame wall behind you that's coming to kill you or something like that. Um, so it's just a kind of unique way to give the player still pressure, but a little bit less of an maybe intense pressure than a giant wall of fire. And then we introduce a new mechanic, which is wall jumping on the same wall. Um, and that basically kills two birds with one stone. Um, and that'll give us a pretty, what I at least would consider a pretty decent level design for that level. So I'm going to save that one. Um, and... I'm going to do this again with a little bit of a more interesting, um, definitely more intense kind of level. Um, might take a little while, or like a little bit longer than the last one. Um, but I'm going to try and run through it fairly quickly. First, I'm going to take a sip of, of tea. Because tea is awesome. Okay, so we have this one. I'm going to close Unity. Um, this is great, but I don't really need to save this because this is really just SketchUp of trying to figure out, um, well, trying to figure out how we're going to design a level. So I'm just going to make a new one. I realize I'm using an ancient version of Photoshop, but that's okay. Alright, so in this next level, um, what I'm thinking of doing is um, having, like we had discussed what, I, what we weren't doing last time, which was the giant wall of fire, um, is having some very large object, what I think will end up being a spiky ball, that will sort of roll forward. Um, and move behind the player while the player tries to I'll just draw the chicken. So you play in this game as a chicken or a horse. Um, I think the last level we saw was with a horse, but anyway, this would be the chicken. So, um, so the goal is that the chicken will then have to run, obviously, and get to the end. There'll be some flag here at the end. But what I'd like to do is make it so that this whole level is pretty much the height of the spike ball. Um, and then the player's going to have to use the skills they've developed of jumping, um, dodging, running, doing whatever else, uh, all in the frame of this pressure, having something behind you that's coming to try to kill you. Um, so I think what we should try to do is set it up so it's kind of like there's kind of three levels and to jump up to this one is fine and to jump from this one up to this one is fine but the player can't make this jump without some, the help of some other block so that's where we're gonna make life a little bit interesting um, and yeah let's see what happens because this is kind of a crazy thing that I haven't tried before. So, 
Um, I'm going to make this image or this the canvas size a lot wider. Um, in fact, even wider. Let's just make sure. I have to make sure that the pixels, um, in terms of width and height, are all divisible by 40. The reason for that is because we have the grid is. Oh, actually, no, I don't because I'm just doing a SketchUp and I'm not doing it in Unity anymore. Never mind. That was for the last, the last workflow method, which has now changed. Um, okay, so let's um, actually make this a little bit less tall. All right. So um, now, in most games, you know, pretty much every game, um, the player goes from left to right. That seems to be the, the thing that we do in North America, um, probably because reading is left to right and writing is left to right in our language, in, well, in the languages of North America at least. Um, so I want to not do that, <laughs> because why not? Um, so I'm going to get the player to go from right to left, and we're going to play test it and see how terrible that is. This is not a very straight line. Um, see how terrible that is and make decisions accordingly. So keep in mind that behind the player at all times here there's going to be a giant spiky ball of doom that's moving towards the moving towards the left. Okay? So now we're going to split this up into three different levels um, and this will be the last by levels, I mean like height, like stories, not levels like video game levels. Um, so this will be the end on top. And I'm thinking the first the first challenge will be jumping. Um, here, I'll use another color. So first challenge will be like jumping up in time, jumping up in time. Um, then the next challenge will be avoiding um, obstacles, or sorry, uh, trying to time yourself to dodge something shooting projectiles. All right, now this is on different levels, right? So, oh, I should just get rid of this. Okay, so this is going to go up to here, um, and I figure, actually, you know what? I'm just going to show you while I while I do it because I have certain things in mind that I hope you will agree with, and if you don't, of course, comments. Um, let me know what you're thinking. So, what I think I'm going to do here is the first thing we'll have to do is jump up to the first level. Okay, so there, we don't need to do something like putting spikes here or anything like that. Um, reason for that is, well, just yet. The reason for that is that the fact that they only have a limited amount of time because the giant spiky ball is going to kill them, um, that's enough pressure that the player's going to have to keep moving forward. So we're going to do the same thing up to what we're calling the third level. So they need to make a quick couple of jumps. And then I'm thinking it'll drop off, and the player will run, and naturally they'll run here, right? They'll fall off the edge of the cliff, or the edge of this thing, and they'll land on this platform. Um, so actually what we could do is make it so that if they fall too quickly, they actually do kind of get stuck. They still have time to get up and there'll be a wall, like, there'll be, you could wall jump up here, if need be, but ideally that's not what's going to happen. Um, the other option is they could jump and they could land on a higher level. Alright, so, um, so what I want them to do, because I think what's most naturally going to happen is they're going to see the gap, they're going to try and jump. Um, so I want to make that more difficult up here than it is down here. Because um, I like the idea of 
well, they'll be able to replay the level and think, okay, what if I went the other way? Um, and they'll actually find out that the easier way is the less intuitive way, which tends to be a good way of rewarding people for thinking a little bit outside of the box. So, um, let's just erase this. Great. So, um, here we're going to have, let's make this a little longer. We're going to have a couple of projectiles shooting down that are going to be offset in time. So you're going to have to jump. And if you do make this jump, then you're going to have to stop and think, okay, one second, I have to time myself properly. Um, down here, for example, though, if you fall down to here, they'll just be one spiky thing that you have to jump over. It's a little bit easier, and you can also do it a little bit quicker which means the further parts of the level will be less um, will be less difficult because you'll have the, the giant spiky ball will be behind you but will be less close behind you than it would be if you had to wait around for these projectiles to shoot. So, um, if you guys are just joining me by the way, I'm doing um, level design for this one player puzzle levels um, and what we're introducing today is the pressure of mechan uh, the, the pressure mechanic, the mechanic of pressure uh, to force the player to go quickly through the level and efficiently through the level. So in this case, what we're doing is we have this giant spiky ball of doom that you see here, um, and that's going to basically roll through the level and try and kill the player. Um, so, so first first thing is jumping, jumping, fairly simple. Next thing is avoiding projectiles or avoiding spikes. Now the next thing is going to be uh, some block placement. So somewhere in here they have to place blocks and ooh, actually I have a kind of cool idea. Okay, so there'll be more projectiles being shot over here and over here um, and there'll be yeah I'm going to have to make this quite a lot wider let's just make the image wider okay so we have this here um, now again I'm sure it's going to have to be a lot wider but here there'll be some block placement and the goal is going to be again there's going to be a top actually how's this, there'll be a middle and there'll be a bottom now the middle will be harder to get to because in this case chances are the player will jump and land here so we're going to make the middle have the higher reward again which is the reward being simplicity of the of the level, so difficulty. Um, so in here, they're going to try and they're going to be able to place blocks, or they're going to be able to run down on the bottom. Now, but on the bottom, we're going to have something a little bit more difficult as well. So we'll have maybe um, hmm. maybe we'll have some gaps. So maybe we'll have a gap here. And a gap here. And we'll have some spikes here. So the player has to really jump, land here, and then, yeah, why not here too? And then jump and land above that. And they won't be able to just do one big jump and land here because they'll land on the spikes. So, um, so let's do that. And now, um, next up, okay, and in the middle, we probably shouldn't make it too, too easy. Um, why don't we do this? Put a little bit of a lip and put spikes up here. So it's easier because you basically just have to realize not to, not to jump right away when you see this um, when you see this, well, this gap that's about to happen, right? So, you see the platform is about to end, you have to just know not to jump. So, 
Um, another thing, actually, I'm going to take one step back. At the beginning of this level, we had said there's going to be a jumping. You know, you're required to jump here, and you're required to jump here. So maybe this first section doesn't have to be given by the level, but actually has to be made by a platform that you're going to place. So according to that, why don't we go and get rid of this and put just put a straight line and put some spikes here. What that's going to do is that's going to give the player a little bit more reason to place a platform here. Because if those spikes weren't there, then they might think, oh, I can just wall jump up. But then they're going to fall really behind in time because this giant ball is coming at them. Right? So, um, so let's just write down, I guess at the beginning of the level, I'll just write down which blocks we're giving them. So let's give them one, one by four. The intention is to have it used here. Um, the other one in the middle here, we're going to give them another platform. Um, that's in case they want an easier time going up, or in case, ideally, now it depends on who you are playing the level and how you want it to happen, but I would design the level for something that I have in mind, and then people use it in all sorts of different ways. And it's actually very interesting to see, but um, let's say that somebody wants to block one of these projectiles with a block. That's my thought, is it's going to be a lot easier if you've taken the, the middle path to get through this section, if you um, if you've blocked one of these projectiles, so let's give them something else, a one by three, and now let's continue building this level. So, um, so we've got we've got jumping based on a block that we placed, and then we've got um, decision making of up or down which one looks easier, which one looks harder. Um, then we've got this middle area with the dotted lines, which is a little bit um, figure out if you want to place a block there. If not, it might be a little more difficult. Again, decision making. Um, the harder decision to make, or the harder one to reach, is going to be the easier one to run through. The easier one to reach is harder to run through. And what's next? Um, so we have a bunch of different... We have a bunch of different mechanics, obviously. Um, some of the blocks, we have springs as some of the blocks. We have a um, fan platform, that's the one that moves up and down. Um, we have all sorts of things. I'm thinking we could use one of these more interesting blocks here, and we can make the player need to go up to a certain height. But what we're going to do here so the way this is designed, this, the player who's running here, they can't jump to reach that, because if they jump, they'll hit this, and they'll come back down. All right. So there's going to be no way to jump like this or something. That's not going to be possible. Um, and here, of course, you can't jump all the way up, because it's going to be too high. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to make this um, what we call like a slippery block. So you can't actually wall jump on it. So that's going to make life a lot more difficult. But what that's going to do is it's going to force you to use one of either a block, so you could use a, a normal platform, or we're going to give you another platform that's a little bit more interesting, because this will be probably a little bit later on in the game. So I'm going to give a fan platform, which you guys saw a little bit earlier if you were here. Um, so I'm going to give them a fan platform. I'm just going to Put this in a different color. So, I'm just going to show you that, that anything that I'm writing in here is um, is blocks that we're giving the player. Now, um, again, if you guys have any comments or questions, let me know, and I'll be sure to answer them. Um, and yeah, all right. So, the next thing is that fan platform that they're going to probably think to place here. And I again have to make the thing even wider. 
Okay, so we have a few cool different things that are happening. Now they get to the point of this um, of using this fan platform. Now, what else do we want to try to do? Um, I'm thinking maybe at this point in the level, the the big ball is probably going to start catching up. Um, this point being, I keep forgetting you guys can't see my mouse um, here because the player is going to have to jump onto the fan platform, wait for it to move up, and then jump off it onto the next section. So the next section should be, I think, a sort of free flowy, um, smooth running kind of section. Um, and how should we set that up? Well, we want to make it relatively difficult. We want to make the player have to jump or time themselves properly. Or no, I shouldn't say time themselves. They should be able to run straight, like at full speed, um, but they should have to do some sort of decision making. So why don't we give them a little bit more time to run, and then why don't we split this into even more pieces? Now, this is just getting kind of crazy, but we're going to see what happens. Um, so hmm. Alright, so what I'm thinking in this section is that we'll have the bottom will all be spikes and the player will have to um, make sure that they're staying in the right place at the right time. The problem is the higher up you are, because you're more safe in the sense of if you if you fall off, you know, if you're running and you fall off, you're pretty safe. If you're running and you fall off, you're pretty safe. Whereas down here, if you fall off, you're pretty screwed. So, um, so we're going to make the top a little bit more dangerous and the bottom a little bit easier, and that's going to give us um, a little bit of, I don't know, It'll make it a little bit more balanced so that you wouldn't just always stay on top. Uh, again, let's make this... I'm just going to make it like way wider. Okay. So, now down here, I'm going to have... this... Um, up here we'll have get smaller and smaller. So here we'll have maybe some spikes. Um, no, don't make it too easy on the bottom either because we don't want to, well, we don't want it to be, we don't want one way to be necessarily that much better than the other way. Um, so the, the top should probably be a little bit harder, but it's also might be a little bit faster. So how are we going to make sure that it's a little bit faster? Well, um, one thing is that on the bottom, we could have things that slow you down a little bit. So things where you have to jump over them or you have to time yourself to jump over them. So for example, this block, um, what we could do is make it like this. This way, you would jump, hit the wall, come down, and then have to jump up and then keep going. So, that's one way it's kind of going to slow people down. Um, why don't we put a spike here? What that's going to do is somebody who runs here jumps. When they jump, they're going to have to be very careful. So that's going to level the playing field a little bit. Um, and last one, because we really want to reward people for, for doing this, and then this, and then this, and then to the next part, because that's going to be quite a bit more difficult. Um, what we can do is we can actually do the same kind of thing here. Actually, let's put a wall here like this. So now they're going to have difficulty if they make this jump great. If they land here, they can jump here and make this jump great. Um, but if they're lower, they're going to have to either wall jump or they'll have to place one of their blocks. Which brings us back to blocks. Are we going to give them something else? And I think yes, we should. Um, they just need something small that they can put here maybe. So 
let's say we give them a 1 by 2 just go back to my pile of blocks that we're giving the player let's really say platform not, not blocks but all right so we're going to give those and then what's the ending thing do you guys have any ideas people that are watching any thoughts of what we should do for the end if you just type them in the comments i will respond oh i guess there's also a delay so when i'm saying this there's still like 20 seconds or so of of delay between the time i'm actually going to see something showing up but anyway um so i'll just start a little bit and hopefully you guys will give some comments in a second and i'll be able to see them and respond to them so um end of the level i'm thinking this thing's really in the way um What's the question? I didn't really understand. Somebody said what happened. So we put the end of the level here, um, and we're gonna try and do something. I'm thinking we can make it difficult. <laughs> um, so we make it over this hump. Actually, let's. Hmm. Okay. This is kind of interesting. Why don't we do this? Um, you know, so somebody just asked what was going on. I'm just asking um, if you guys have any ideas for the end of this level of how we can add sort of pressure to the situation um, <clears throat> and we can design, sort of help design this level together. Because um, there's just one last section that we're going to finish off. But I think over here, what could be a cool idea is having um, having this here. So if you do miss your jump, let's say here you fall, or here you, you fall down here, there's a possibility to jump through here, but it's going to be difficult. But it still doesn't mean that you're going to be completely screwed. It just means that it's going to be difficult. So then here, and I'm thinking... Um, I'm thinking this, and then well, this would just be very evil. All right, let's see what happens. So I'm thinking this is going to be a slide wall, so you can't wall jump on it. This is going to be the same thing, so you can't wall jump on it. And this jump will be, you can make it to here, but you won't be able to make it to, obviously, to the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the player springs so imagine a spring here and a spring here so that they can jump up jump up and then come down here and continue um, difficult thing is that this time is going to be getting short because they're going to be um, they're going to have this giant spiky ball behind them and they're going to have to move quickly plus who knows the spring they might have placed the spring somewhere else they might have used the fan platform here there's lots of choices to make. So I'm going to give the player two springs um, at the beginning here. We'll just call it times two. Um, and then we're going to get to the end of the level. And then we'll give them one more. Because there's got to be some way to get up here, right? And if you miss, let's say you fall down here and you miss this jump, there should be some way to get back up. Now maybe Maybe, depending on how evil we're feeling, um, we could either just not give them anything, so they'd have to come back up, jump, 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 and then try and make the jump again. Or we could give them one little sort of one-by-one one block. Um, I'm going to suggest we start without giving them anything, and then we're going to see what happens. So, um, I'm going to try and put this massive mess into Unity. Um, that might take a little, a little while, so I'm going to check back on this and make sure that we're updated with, um, I don't know, make sure that I'm keeping you guys in the loop as what we're actually aiming for and what we're doing in Unity. So in the Unity scene, I'm going to do the same thing I did for the first level, which is I'm just going to copy-paste level 1, and I'm going to call it Twitch 
pressure 2 because we have twitch pressure already. And here I'm going to. Uh, sorry, just checking something. Alright. So here I'm going to take the pause menu just to get rid of it for a second. And now we're going to make the camera collider. That's the thing that's. Um, here I'll just get rid of this for a second. So the camera collider is this green box. We want to make it really wide and really wide and not very tall. Um, so that's that. So we're going to start out the boundaries. So I'm just going to drag things around. I align it to the grid. I align it properly to the grid um, later. But right now I'm just going to throw the boundaries and throw the colliders and stuff where I need, where I think they should be. Um, we'll test the level out and then we'll solidify everything and make sure it looks good and feels good afterward. So uh, first things first. So we need a long, we need quite a long piece that's going to be the ground here, right? Let's go back into Unity and we're going to make this. I don't know. 48. Just move these guys out of the way. We're going to move our starting flag at the beginning here. Ending flag will move up here. I'm sure it's going to have to be longer than this, but that's fine. So, um, actually, we're going to move it just a bit forward because we're going to want to make room for the giant spiky ball of doom. So, that is that. All right. Um, now the camera collider is here. Now one of the things we should test is with this camera collider, how high uh, we can jump and how um, we don't want to be able to jump from, like we had said here, we don't want to be able to jump from the bottom to the top in one jump. So that's something we're going to have to be careful of. So why don't we test that out first and make sure that we're good. So given this size of, of thing, let's just copy paste this, make it one by one. Now, so you can see the grid, or I'm not sure if you can see the grid, but I think you probably can. Um, so the player can jump, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, six high. Might be five. I'm going to check that right now. Um, so let's give this a shot. Oh, I didn't change the placing of the block. Okay, so it is five. So you can see you can't, obviously you can't get up on this one. Um, so this needs to be two. I think I might have messed something up, but anyway. Um, okay, so this is just a teeny bit too high. You can see he kind of gets, well, that's a bug that we have to fix, but um, you can see he kind of can't get up here. So let's make it one little thing lower. Negative three and 2.5. And now we'll see. Okay, so now he can get up here. And the next one is going to have to be higher there. Let's just get an example. So you can see it goes one, two, three, four. So this is going to be one, two, three, four. So that should be like that. Now this is just to test out. Um, this is just to test out how high the jumps are and how high each of the levels has to be. When I say levels, I mean like um, stories. So this is better. Now we know there's 
we have three different levels. So the top top level uh, is obviously going to be taller than the other ones. That's fine. Um, the camera, well, we can make it. We can move everything up and make it the camera slightly smaller. But I'm going to keep it as it is for now. Um, all right. So um, let's stop this for a second. Let's go back to Photoshop to look at the level that we're trying to design. So first big thing is going to be this giant block and let's go ahead and put that in. Now I'm going to keep these two here as my reference so I'm just going to move them over to the side here. I'm going to keep those as my reference so I know exactly how high I want things to be. Let's up this to 10, no, to 8. So now what I want to do is have it so exactly like this. So it'll line up to the top level. Um, let's go with 3.5, 2.5. Great. So this lines up nicely. So if I just put my background back in, I'll actually, considering it's going to be long, Alright, so now you can see we have this. And obviously I can't jump up with one jump, but I could do a wall jump up, which is fine. No problems there. Uh, according to our Photoshop, though, we're going to put some spikes down here so that it's going to encourage the player to use one of their blocks here. So, um, putting spikes in, let's do that. And maybe a four. I'll just line that up nicely. 11, maybe 4. Make it kinematic, which means that it's not going to move around if you hit it. And um, yeah, that's that. So now we have this. You can still wall jump. You don't really need a you don't really need a platform, but it's certainly going to be more difficult than if you did have a platform. Cool. Cool. So uh, this let's make it zero. Now then, um, the next step is we're going to make this section. Oops. So <clears throat> we're going to make this big block on the bottom first. Again, I'll just copy paste this. So it's going to be less tall, um, probably significantly less tall. Yeah, that's better. And it's going to be a lot wider. So maybe that's a good way to go. I'll make sure it's aligning with the grid nicely. So I'm going to do 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, and So now we have this thing aligning with the grid. Pardon the weird um, graph paper issues, but obviously it's a temporary background. So I'm just going to check, make sure that when you get up here, if you're running, you're going to land straight on this. All right, so if you're just walking normally, you'd fall. But if you're running, then you land on it. Every time. I'm trying to make sure we don't hit any snags where, like, I don't know, you end up with this kind of thing, or you get stuck or something. All right, we're good. So that's that step. Then we said we're going to add a little bit of a spike thing to this. Although we did say here we wanted the spikes to be, um, yeah, what our goal here with these spikes is that the player should be able to jump over it and then jump to here uh, if they're running. Now it's going to be a little difficult because this is not actually that wide. That's kind of the whole point, right? So let's put some nails here. So this will cause the player to have to sort of stop and start again. But I do think that's probably a little bit too much stopping and starting, so I'm going to make this a wee bit wider and move it over a little bit and move this nails over as well. 
just a little bit. To make this a bit more difficult. So again, if we just actually that doesn't really work. Let's try it again. Put that wherever. Okay, so now if we're here, we run, we have these things, and that's exactly what we want to happen. So chances are the player's gonna run, they're gonna jump, and they're gonna land there. What we want them to be able to do, if they're skilled enough, is jump and then jump to whatever's next. So um, that's the next big thing that's going to happen. Um, this we can make wider again. Um, let's make this six. So, um, that's what we want, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, and then the gaps are going to happen, start happening there. Question is, well, first of all, we need to do this top part. So let's do that first. Um, this one, hi. Eight. Yeah, we want it to be equally difficult for somebody to jump from there to um, this this block, right? Because we said over here we're going to put this. That's going to be on the second level. So second level is the same one as this one, which is negative three in the y. Of three, and we want this to line up nicely with the corner, so we get 25.5. Now we can do a little bit of testing again to see how hard it is to jump from whichever place to whichever place. So, here, if you're just running, great. Uh, if you decide to jump, also great, but there's going to be projectiles up here. We'll see in a second. Now, the question is, how hard is it to jump from here to here? Okay, probably too easy. Um, here to here, also probably too easy. So, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So I'll make it a little bit harder, and then we're going to move this over by just a little bit. And make it a bit harder. So for the moment I'm just gonna take the start and this is something that's useful to do when designing levels is be able to have your spawn point be um, wherever you want because then you can you can uh, test the level without having to restart the entire level. So now I'm starting here. So if I run forward that's what's likely to happen. <laughs> Alright let's try it again. So start at the beginning, I run forward I want to do this, I want to do this, perfect. So that's a that's a running jump and that's decently difficult to do. Now if I were to start at the beginning and run up here, can I make this? Yes. Perfect. Um, what I do want to do is add a couple of projectile shooters over here. So this we're going to turn upside down. I'm going to make sure with the camera collider that you can see those projectile shooters. I'm going to put them maybe here and here. Sure. So negative five and eight. Let's see where the camera collider is. Yeah, that's perfect. So it's going to be eight and negative three. Now I'm going to offset them a little bit um, so that the second one shoots a little bit later. Um, that way we'll end up with a little bit more difficult um, a little bit of a more difficult situation. So let's try this again. Now we have oh I didn't get up there. Now we have this thing happening. So um, now the issue is with this, I don't know if you guys can see this issue. Um, because they're so close to the front of the um, of this platform, what could very easily happen is you're just running and you jump and you just get killed because 
you just so happen to land there at the wrong time. What I want to happen is I want the player to be able to land on the platform, then think about it, work on the timing, and then that'll slow them down. It won't necessarily kill them, but it'll slow them down. Um, so I'm going to move these over a bit. Now this way, um, the player is running, they jump, they see the projectiles, they stop. Now they look, they take a second, they figure out the timing, and then they run. So that'll give them a bit of a pause, and then the thing that's behind them, the thing that's coming up behind them, is going to catch up to them, and they're going to be slowed down a little bit. Um, again, that's the that's the sort of flaw of doing what is what seems like the most logical or most free flowy thing, right? Is that you had just jumped up, so chances are you put a platform over here. You just jumped up, you got to the top, and you jump up again. But now you have to time yourself, and now you have to go, right? Um, so where are we at? That part works out nicely. We said over here, we want to put a block, obviously, and we want to put two projectile shooters here. So the projectile shooters will also make it a little more difficult for the person who chose to go up here, because um, they will then have to deal with these things. The person who went down here um, will hopefully be able to use one of their platforms to block one of the things. Not that I'm giving away any secrets. <laughs> um, and then you'll be able to, they'll be able to have a little bit of an easier time. So let's put two projectile shooters up there. In fact, I can just copy paste the ones that I have here. Now the question is going to be, do we want them <coughs> offset? Do we want them not offset? Right now they will be offset, so that's something we have to consider. Now let's make this one taller. So I want to make sure that the this thing goes all the way up to the camera collider. Um, we also want to make sure that it the bottom of it, so this part here, comes down to the bottom of the other the other block of the same height or the same level, right? So I believe it's here. So I have to make this one little tiny bit bigger. So this should be halfway through here. Oh, that's why, because this is not placed properly. This should be here. Shouldn't it? This one's y is one, this one y is two. Okay, that actually changes things quite a bit. I didn't realize that was... Oh, that's fine, okay. No, that's fine. So we're going to make it just a little bit above... Um, oops. I'm just going to make it a little bit above the, the, the what we're calling the third level. And then this one will... Yeah, this one will have the same, the same kind of thing. No problem. So let's try this again. Again, part of the process is um, iterating and trying things out. So, now we can time ourselves, but now we have this to deal with. So, if you're coming down from the middle, this is difficult unless you've blocked one of the projectiles, um, but you could still go down and get hit by an arrow, <laughs> or you could jump up, try and go straight through. That's not going to work either. So, quick hold, then here you get a little bit of a, this kind of feeling, which is nice. Um, question is, can you run through here and just run smoothly? So, the answer is not so much because of these projectile shooters. Um, that's fine. Let's try one more time and see if we can do this kind of smoothly. Nope. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, actually, that's even more interesting. All right. So if you time your jump properly, or if you don't time your jump properly, then you might fall into this into this pit that we're setting up as well. 
So what do we have so far? We have everything. We don't have this thing yet. We don't have this part yet. So um, let's get rid of that. So we have this little gap, which is a nice little annoyance. Um, this thing could be Now I do want to make sure that my stuff is centered. So I'm starting at the beginning and I'm going to end at the end of the camera. That doesn't seem to be the case because we still have a whole bunch of other stuff that needs to get done, which is all this level. Um, so we're probably going to have to move a whole bunch of things over um, to the right. So I want to make the camera collider bigger now that we see now that we see what we're going to actually how much space we're actually going to need and try and move the stuff over. So question is with this green box here, the camera collider, which you can see when I get rid of that, um, is this box going to be big enough to contain the whole level? Now let's see how much have we done so far. If we move this stuff over, we've done this is probably. I don't know, we probably have a quarter left. And here we've done probably only about half. So this is probably going to have to be even bigger. I might not have time to finish this during this stream. Um, we might have to do that next time. But uh, I'm going to do what I can. So, camera collider. Let's make the camera collider even bigger. Let's make it 144. And it's always best to make it as big as possible instead of smaller, because in this case, if it's smaller, then we have to shift everything over. If it's bigger, um, then we can always just move the camera collider accordingly and make sure that it's not, uh, well, make sure that it's not too, doesn't go too far outside of where the boundary of the level should be. So let's move everything maybe by 16. Um, I have to do algebra here. I guess it's not algebra, but calculations that I don't have to do. Um, by 16. That doesn't work. Yeah, it does. Okay. Oh, no, it doesn't. That's why I'm confused. Never mind. Alright, so. Um, that's what I meant to do. There's other nails here. Eight. Okay, I think this one was wrong. Um, there we go. Okay, so. Um, So I'm just moving everything over a little bit, um, and this is going to be to make sure that my camera collider, which is here, has the beginning at the beginning and the end at the end. This still seems actually like it's not quite going to be enough, so I'm going to move it to... I'm going to see actually if I can move all this stuff at the same time over by... No, that's what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> All right. So that's not obviously not possible. So camera collider, I'm going to move this over so that I make sure that um, I have the end of this is going to touch the end of the camera collider. So let's move it over by another. I wonder if you could actually do this in here. No, you can't. Okay. Well, I tried. Um, let's move it over by another 16. I'll just check with this one before I go further. Yeah, so move it over by another 4. Over by another 2. Okay, 
Okay, move it over by one less, actually. All right, well, the camera collider I can, I can work with. So I'm going to make this back to 44.5. So I believe it went from 22 to 44, so it was 22 point. It was 22 more, so I'm moving everything over by 22 more. These ones we're saying are just reference anyway. And the boundary, move that over as well. So moving over everything by 24. Sorry about that. I realized that was kind of taking a longer time than what we'd like, um, but it is necessary. So negative eleven forty-four is going to be thirteen. Nope. Okay, well, I'll just play with this in a second. Um, I thought it was. Yeah, obviously an issue here. Oh no, that's okay. That's good. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to put back at the beginning. And oh, I have to move these arrow shooters as well. Gonna slide these guys over. Make sure I got all of them. Slide these guys over. And move them so that I can make sure that they're not. Um, Make sure that they're only like semi in the scene, so you can see them, but you, um, but you don't necessarily see above them. Oh, that's better. Okay. Um, no, yeah, the background's not quite there, but if you run forward, we're good. That's what we wanted. If you jump up, you have to stop. Kind of time yourself and get hit by arrows. Perfect. So that's where we're at. Um, now with this camera collider, we've got enough space left, I think, that we'll be able to make the rest of the level. So um, next step, we said we're going to let's move this down here. Next step, we said we're going to do this part. So we have. This we want to add another one. Actually, I just want to add the rest of the the bottom of the rest of the level, but that's only this long. So let's do that now. No point making it small for now. So let's do that. It's actually probably a little bit too big. It's probably better. So I want to make sure this gap is the same as this gap. Get a little bit of consistency in there. Okay. I said we're going to put some nails on this thing. And that was going to be in order to make sure you can't just hop from here to here and not think twice. So I'm going to put nails there. Chromatic. Put nails there. Right now I want to make sure that you can't actually jump, well, I'll show you in one second. Um, oops. So now I want to make sure 
you can't actually jump across here without issues, and you can't. Perfect. So that works quite nicely. And the next thing we want to do is maybe add this thing, and then add this slidey wall and this block. So let's copy paste. It's really easy to just copy paste colliders <coughs> in Unity. And set that up. So I'm going to put some nails there just to annoy the world. No, this is going to make it a little bit less. Um, it's going to give a little bit less of a reason to go on this upper path here. But really, it's still a better choice to go there. It's just, or a faster choice to go there. You just have to be a little bit more careful. But I want to make the slippery wall. Um, this actually should be a little bit smaller. Actually, no, I'll do that after, I'll tell you why. <clears throat> so, we're going to use a boundary to make this slippery wall. Obviously, it doesn't have to be that tall. And the goal is to make it just as high as the, the highest sort of tier, right? So, that's going to be... That's going to be up here. Gonna slide across. So it's gonna look like this. So this one can actually be less tall. Maybe a little bit more tall. Okay. So let's go with three. We have two. Where's that boundary? There we go. Now the question is going to be if we can. I'm just going to bring the start, <coughs> bring the start closer. That's going to make our lives a little bit quicker. So the thing we want to make sure of is that you can't get up here. So obviously you would not jump too quickly because you'll hit the spike. Um, the question is, can you get up to the top there? And the answer is I'm not quite sure, unless you wall jump, which certainly is possible. Um, no problems there. But we want to make this wall jump, if we are wall jumping, a little bit more difficult. So why don't we make this a tiny bit smaller. So instead of being 8, we'll make it 7. And then we'll do this. 12, 3. So this will make that wall jump a little bit more difficult, and also, yeah, exactly, perfect, perfect. It'll also what that also does is it makes it harder to to try and get up there, like to try and get up there directly. The thing is, what we do need to do is we do need to put a little bit of a collider above it because otherwise the boundary, you can't wall jump, so you can't actually land on it either. Um, so I just want to make sure that there's actual boundary that you can that you can land on on top of there. Right, now, um, what's next? So the next thing is going to be this big block, and then we have this whole fancy situation to deal with. So let's make that big block. The size of that block doesn't really matter so much. It's more a question of if the player feels like they have enough time to start running. Um, and that we'll have to try to give them. Okay, so that's good. 0.5, The other thing is we want to make sure that this, you see this is not quite lined up. What that's going to do is there's going to be a little bit of a jump between here and here. Or not a jump, but like a, a drop, which might be a little bit weird. So um, I'm going to try to move this here and just move this down a little bit. Now I'm doing this manually um, instead of aligning it perfectly to the grid. I guess I could, if it's 0 0.01, so that can be 3. This should be 2.49, 2.44. Four, five. Yeah, so that should be 
that should be better. Let's just uh, test that out. Yeah, so now you see you can't wall jump on that. You can't really wall jump on that, but if you get up to here, you could wall jump on it. So, um, again, it'll depend on how good the player is. Good, I'm just going to save this, or else I haven't saved in quite a while. Alright, so the next thing we have is this pit of spikes. Um, I'm not going to bother putting the spikes right now, because if you just fall to your death, that's equally um, dangerous. I'm just going to make this a little wider and put it here. So now you see this hazard is going to be um, the thing that decides if you die. And I'm going to make this last little bit, the bottom, just because it'll be nice to set up. Um, let's just take a quick look. Alright. question is, where's the end of... Oh, okay, perfect. I was worried because I saw the red flag was here. I figured that was the end of the level. I'm just going to put that at the actual end of the level. So now we have a, a decent marker of, you know, seeing where the end is. So, kind of a collider. This one's going to be quite large because it's going to be from the end of the level all the way to, yeah, almost to there. That could work. So let's line it up with the camera collider. So this guy's going to be here. Here, it can go a little bit outside. Um, you know what, I'll move it here and I'll make this 38. This can be negative 3.5. So all these numbers that I'm putting in, by the way, in case you've been curious, are just um, aligning things to the grid and making sure that everything is, is nice and aligned properly in Unity. Um, also, if you're wondering why I keep looking to my right or to your left, because um, I have my sort of monitoring myself and making sure everything's still cool. And yeah, that's that. All right. So let's move this over a bit. Actually, going to have to make this even wider. Great. So that's this giant pit. And um, the next thing that we want to do is going to be all of this stuff. Now, let's bring over, um, remember we had our markers. This one we're actually going to put it to. I want to see, I just want to test if that's going to work. So over here, we should be able to get up to there. And the answer is we can't really. So it has to go back to one. That's fine. Um, what I'm doing is basically I want to use these markers or these these things we've been using for reference. Um, I'm just going to use them as reference in the pit as well. Because um, we can look at what we have here. Um, actually, I'm going to try and make it Split screen. Let's see how this works out. Okay, so here I'm going to make this so that you can see it here. You should be able to still see um, the webcam and everything else. Alright, so now I can see what we want to try and set up the camera collider. For now I'm just going to put the... actually I need to make one more of these and it's going to be this height. So that's sort of the bottom reference. Um, negative seven. So negative seven, negative three, and uh, what might have to be... It should be one. Three, negative seven, that makes perfect sense because there's four between each one, which means you can jump 
decently between them. So we're going to put this, I'm going to do them very roughly at this point, and then um, at least in terms of the, the X position, and then afterward I'll be able to make them, well, align them properly. So this one I'm going to move over. Let's see what the next thing is. Next we have this, but it's really going to be one. And I'm going to copy paste it. Oops. This is going to be two. Oh, actually, sorry, it's going to be three. Six. And so what that's going to do is be a little stop like area where you have to um, you have to stop and jump up. This one's going to be a little bit of a thinner one. Um, then same kind of thing over here. We're going to make this three. Over here we're going to make it wider, and this wider bit is going to be so that we make sure that we don't um, that we don't just fall to our death super quickly in case we miss one of the jumps. Gotta be nice sometimes, I guess. Alright, and then after this point, this thing should start. So, um, actually it's fine that there's a little gap there. Maybe I'll make this a little bit wider, so that... Alright, now the last thing we're missing is this big um, L-shaped thing. So this we can let's move the boundary away. So we want to make this maybe here. Oh no, actually we want to make it further back. So well we want the We want it to be so that the best jump that you could make from this from this block, um, this top little one, we want to make it so that you could land here if you do it really perfectly. So why don't we place this one first um, and see. So negative 40. Negative 26. One. So what I'll do again is I'll take the start flag and move it over to where I want it to be. All right. So if you make this jump perfectly, wow. Okay, I didn't expect that was going to work so well. Um, if not, you can always wall jump up. But if you do it, if you're running and you jump and go as far as you can, okay, I think it should be one square further. Um, so that we can actually move, we can actually move this one over by one, and um, we can keep this like this. Now let's just test it one more time. Now if we run and jump, perfect. Actually, we can probably even go. Oh, oops! I moved to the wrong way. Never mind. That's why. So it should be negative twenty-five. And actually, you know what? We can really get rid of. Hmm. No, not really. Yeah, maybe what we can do is get rid of this. Let's move that over there. Because we want to make sure that the, the jump from here is fine, and then the jump from here. Oops. So, the jump from here is good. And then the jump from here, and then the jump from here will be exactly that. Now, 
I'm thinking ideally there's a way to make it so that you you're basically holding forward and you're just timing your jumps properly. Apparently that's not the way. But I think it's I think it's looking possible. It's just gonna mean an early jump off this one. No, so that's gotta move back a little bit. So here if you can jump. Yeah, actually what that means is this all has to move to the left a little bit. So we'll move that by three. Remove this by three. Now, now what should happen is if you're starting out here, you can jump, jump, jump. Perfect. That was actually very satisfying, even though we had like, even though I'm making the level myself. Um, that is exactly what we want. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some spikes here. Kinematic. Oh, this isn't properly lined up. We'll do it for 13.5. So this nails should be negative 15. And then we're also going to put ones on the top, which is going to try to get the player to um, to jump at the right time, which is timing it properly for the for the little one one by one block. But again, it's going to be difficult. It's also going to cause some issues to the people jumping from here to here, which is part of the goal. Um, and yeah, that's it for this section, I believe. Now this L, um, yeah, this, so this is a place where you could place a block if you wanted. Um, we're going to take this collider, put it here, six. Although actually there should be a little bit more space because Ooh, unless maybe no no we wanted to make it more difficult so um, maybe we can move this up to here and then we can put these here so it's possible it's just very difficult. Just make sure that's kinematic. All right. So now, if we try this again, so let's see you're going. You do this. You miss this jump. Then you can come down. You can either do this and take a lot of time because keep in mind there's something that's going to be coming from behind you, um, or you can do this and. Die. But there, there's a way to do it, I believe. Yeah. Uh, although this has to be a little bit higher for us to get through. The important part is going to be like this seven. Put that up there. Three, two. I believe this should still work. So if I do try and do the timing thing, nope. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop killing myself. Anyway, assuming I got that jump, then this one's good. Assuming I missed it, then is there a way? Yes, there is a way. But even this is a little too easy, I think. Well, maybe not. Let's see, maybe there's a there's a way to make it more difficult without making it impossible. I'm not sure what it is though. <laughs> so 
I guess that's not super easy. And it still is going to take more time than doing this properly. Wow, that is really awesome. Okay, cool. Um, Alright, so I think we're good for that section. The L part is done. Now, we want to make this next part, which is the uh, slidey walls. So again, we're going to borrow these. And put them... Let's try this. 3, negative 3.5. And yeah, I'm definitely going over the two hour slot that I had intended, but that is okay, as long as you guys are still interested. Um, yes, it is a horse. Um, yeah, sorry, I guess I'll reintroduce sort of what I'm doing. Uh, it's been a little while since I last said anything. Um, so I'm designing levels for the one player mode of our game called Ultimate Chicken Horse. You can see this awesome poster, which is made by our artist. Um, so the Ultimate Chicken Horse is a 2D platformer where you build the level as you play, and in the one-player mode it's a puzzle level where you're given certain blocks and you have to figure out where to place them in order to reach the end of the level. So what we're doing now is we're doing a quite a long level, I'll just show you on the full screen, um, where you start at the right side here at this flag, and there's a giant spike ball behind you that's going to be moving along the level trying to force you through. Um, and you have to run through all these different obstacles and place blocks where you think they're necessary um, in order to get to the end of the level. So we're almost reach, we've almost reached the end of that, and um, and that's that. So we're in, looking at that in Unity now, and I just had Photoshop off on the side so I can see what we're working on. So um, the next thing that we're going to try and do is just Put these guys. There'll be a weird bit of like interface between the backgrounds, but the background is quite clearly temporary, so don't have to worry too much about that. All right, so we have a boundary. Um, camera collider is up here. So let's make this seven. Actually, we'd like it to be. Yeah, no, that's fine. To be honest, um, let's do that. Seven and four, and the next one we're going to put in the same place. Problem is it can't go above. Perfect, perfect. So this camera collider, this green line that you might be able to see here, um, is how high the camera can go. So that's going to be how high the person can actually jump without hitting a ceiling. Um, so this one, fifty-four, three. And I'm just going to grab one of these, make it 1 by 0 0.1. And the point of this is so that the um, so that you can actually land on the top. And this should actually be fine. Let's copy paste that. Oops. Copy, paste that. This will be negative 54. Negative 54. And then in the Y, we can move it to here. Sorry for all the mouse scrolling sounds. It's kind of annoying. Um, Alright, so that is certainly good. And what do we want to do here? We want to make these stairs. Um, the stairs are going to be difficult to make, but we do have a stairs block, so maybe I'm just going to do that. It's kind of easier. Um, so we're going to do 57, 3, and then make sure it's kinematic. And do that again at negative 61, negative 1. Just 
make sure it's set as kinematic. Yes, it is. Um, the stairs should be good. Negative 65, negative 5. Just put the boundary on the outside. Make sure the boundary is just on the outside of the camera collider. So let's try negative 73. And that's just a little bit too far. So we're going to bring it in negative 72.5. Perfect. Now we can also set the other boundary actually because we know it's 72.5. And it looks like we have ourselves a level. Um, except we need a way to get up to the get up to the final flag, because that would be really frustrating if you did the entire level and then there was no way to get to the end. Okay, um, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Oh, we'd like to put a boundary also on the top of the level, just to make sure. Um, oops. So we just want to make sure that's exactly where the camera collider is. Um, which clearly it's not. The only problem with this is that the colliders, because the boundary is a collider, it might end up messing up the arrow shooters. But let's see, if we go back. Oh, let's be a little bit more careful going back. Nope, seems to be working, and these ones also seem to be working. Perfect. So now you'll see you can't actually, like, you'll hit your head if you try to jump up here. Um, Alright. So the last and final awesome thing that we have to do, um, other than saving the level and moving the start to the actual start, Last thing we have to do, well, we have to give the player the blocks that they need. That's one big thing. Um, and we also, okay, so let's do that first. Actually, before we do any of that stuff, let's clean up. Um, let's clean this up a little bit. So anything that's not in level should be in level. So anything that is obviously a part of the level um, should be in that folder. That's that's big because then you see the hierarchy is very clean and one of the things I've kind of realized is that it's very important to have a, a good hierarchy that's clean and pretty otherwise you get really confused alright so now remember we had said, oh no, sorry, first we're going to give the player certain blocks so if you go back to the Photoshop picture we said we were giving them actually not that many blocks considering how much stuff they have to go through, but so we set a four by f a one by four, a one by three, and you can see here I have a whole list of blocks that we can give to the player. Um, so we're gonna give them a couple of springs, a one by two, and a fan platform. All right, great. So now when the player plays plays through the level, um, they can. Something's a little buggy. Um, but anyway, they can place these blocks wherever they'd like. So um, there's a lot of decisions to be made, I guess. Let's start with putting a block here. Next thing, um, the fan platform. I'm thinking we can put that over here. Mm, not even over here, in case we miss the jump. Oh, and it got buggy again. Let's try that one more time. So let's put a spring. Yeah, there's something kind of weird going on with the UI. I know the programmer fixed it, but I haven't gotten the latest stuff from him yet, so I'm kind of waiting for that. Um, 
fan platform. Now let's go with the spring first. Put that there. So now we know we can spring up and spring up. Um, all right, and I keep getting the same bug. Hmm. Try one more time. If not, um, we will figure something else out. All right, so for the two, what I think I might do is make this a little bit easier on myself. Do that. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting the same bug again. All right, so never mind that. Um, but if we just try and run through the level, so I'm not going to put in the giant spike ball that's going to be following you and trying to kill you, but um, if we just leave this as three, let's see if this works. Make sure we can put the spring, it's really the important one, is putting the spring down here and putting another block. All right. Um, and what I'll try to do actually is I'll try to do this. All right. So imagine there's a giant thing chasing after me, and I have a few more platforms that work. Um, this is what we'd be trying to do here. Oh. Beautiful. All right, so it seems that this level works. Um, I'll look into the bugs that were happening before, and we'll make sure that I'm going to put in the... Um, the giant spike ball that's going to be following you, but apart from that, I think we're good. In fact, I'm going to try and just do that right now. Um, I think I'm going to get some issues because, well, um, I've had issues before with trying to make this happen, but as I showed you before with the moving, the uh, that moving spike ball that we had in the first level, uh, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. So we have our spike block, uh, but this time I'm going to make it much bigger. So the scale of this is going to be what, one. Uh, no, sorry, this is one point one. So it's tiny, and this one I'm going to make ten. So we have it there. Uh, oh, spike block. I'm going to put it zero zero zero. The fan platform is the same spot. And then actually I'm going to make this a lot bigger. So I'm going to make this 20. I'm going to make this... Uh, no, I'm going to make this 10. I'm going to make this 100. And I'll make this 20. I'll make this 200. Okay, we'll have to work on a different sprite, obviously. <laughs> um, oops, 15, 150. Let's go with that. And um, I'm just going to move it over, obviously. So now what should happen is it should be able to, if I make this um, 140, I have no idea what's going to happen, but let's see. Oh, it's going up. That's the problem. Gonna rotate that. There you go. So, <laughs> um, so that's good. I'm gonna make it run a little faster. Now I think it might end up running into issues because it might hit the um, it might hit some colliders and not really know what to do. But let's see what happens. I'll just put my thing back here. Oh no, that was a huge fail. Let's try this again. Oh no. Alright, so I think I got too good at this level. And I'm not sure how long it's going to take for the thing to catch up, but I think it's a fair ways behind. Unless, of course, it stopped. Yeah, it seems to have stopped. 
All right, well, anyway, I'll figure that out. Um, not sure why exactly it's moving in the wrong direction. Um, but hey, I can always figure that out. Actually, I'm going to just check something, see if it's if it's this that it hits. No. Yes, it's that thing. Maybe if I move this up. And this one I give it. Oops, that should be zero. Okay, let's see if that actually does something. It might just break everything, but it might not. Looks like it's working pretty well. So you can see this kind of spiky ball of death approaching. I'm just going slowly to make sure that it's still following. Oops. Uh oh. Oh no. And then we're screwed. Alright, perfect. That looks like a successful time. So um, that's going to be all for me. I realize this was way longer than usual. I'm going to try and keep it, I think, next week to an hour. Just keep it short and short and sweet. Uh, we might start introducing Let's Plays of our game as well for the multiplayer mode, which is a little bit more of a spectator sport and a bit less of a, um, you know, talking about level design. But uh, we're going to see what we do with that. So thank you for listening. Uh, if you're checking this out on YouTube, uh, if you made it this long, thank you for that. Well done. Um, and that's about it. So next week, I think we'll talk about using timing as another technique for level design. Um, and yeah, I'll keep it to I'll try and keep it to an hour. And that'll be that. So tell your friends if you liked it, and have a good weekend. Bye, everybody.